Hello and welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video we will explain how to use the Timber Stud Wall Calculator to BS5268 through an example. Initially we will go to the top navigation blue toolbar and open the engineering tab and then browse through the module toolbar where we can select from a variety of different engineering modules. And here we can open the stud wall category and then select the stud wall to BS5268 module. And this opens the stud wall calculator and the stud wall module appears here in the left hand side pane. To start we can click this pencil icon here to rename the module folder to something more project relevant, such as perhaps extension. And then we can click the three dots beside the module itself to rename this module for the specific calculation that we are going to do, such as ground floor stud wall number one, and save. Now let's take a look at the timber design. Initially we will enter the stud wall height, and this should be in millimeters. In this example we will use a stud wall height of 2400 millimeters, which is the default so there is no changes needed. Then we will enter the stud wall spacing. This is usually 400 millimeters center to center, and again, since this is the default, there are no changes needed. Now if there is an opening in the stud wall, then we can add the opening width in this selection. In this example, we will use 1000 millimeters for the width of the opening. Now regarding the slenderness ratio, we can see the calculation for this by scrolling down the description pane and view all the details here. By default the slenderness ratio is set for 180 and the slenderness ratio should not exceed 180 for any compression member carrying dead and imposed loads other than loads resulting from wind, or any compression member however loaded which by its deformation will adversely affect the stress in another member carrying dead and imposed loads other than wind. If we select the drop down menu we see there is also an option for 250 and the slenderness ratio should not exceed 250 for any member normally subject to tension or combined tension and bending arising from dead and imposed loads, but subject to a reversal of axial stress solely from the effect of wind, or any compression member carrying self weight and wind loads only, such as wind bracing. In this example we will use a slenderness ratio limit of 180. Then we see a selection which is related to the restraints of the stud walls. If we have sheathing, then we can click on this selection and choose sheathing. Otherwise, if we have noggins, we can select that and choose noggins. And then we can choose the number of rows, either one row, two rows, three rows, or four rows of noggins. And we'll see this is updated in the description. The consideration of either sheathing or the noggins will usually decrease the slenderness of the stud wall posts. Decreasing the slenderness is a beneficial action for the stud wall. Then we can click on this drop down menu to identify the top and bottom restraints of the timber posts of the timber stud wall. If the timber posts are restrained on both ends, in both position and direction, then we can use 0.7. If the timber posts are restrained at both ends, in position and one end in direction, then we can use 0.85. If the timber posts are restrained at both ends, in position but not in direction, then we can use 1.0. If the timber posts are restrained at one end in position and direction and the other end in direction but not in position, then we can use 1.5. And if the timber posts of the stud wall are restrained at one end in position and direction and free at the other end, then we can choose 2.0. Now effectively we will almost always use 1.0. 1 is when you have top and bottom pin support, so a simply supported stud wall. And 2.0 is when you have a stud wall cantilevering off the ground, which is a little bit rare. But it could happen, but usually we would have 1, so we'll be using 1.0 for this example. Utilization limit is recommended to be set at 99%. We have a special video for the utilization limit explanation in our video section. Next we can click the options button to have a look at our safety factors. It's recommended to set safety factors to unity both for permanent or dead and for variable or live loadings. There are three different service classes. Service class number 1 is when we have a heated and dry environment. Class number 2 is when we have a cold and dry environment. And class number 3 is when the timber is exposed to weather, for example, a timber stud wall that is outside, uncovered and exposed to the weather conditions such as rain. For this example we will choose a service class that is cold and dry, service class number 2. Next we can select the load duration drop down menu and select from either long term, medium term, short term or very short term. For long term, this is usually dead loading such as self weight or storage combined with permanent imposed. In this case we would use 1.0. For medium term, 
This is usually snow or temporary imposed loading combined with dead loading. In this case, we would use 1.25. For short term, this is usually wind or snow with wind combined with dead and imposed loading. In this case, we would use 1.5. For very short term, this is usually wind combined with dead and imposed loading. In this case, we would use 1.75. For this example, we'll choose 1.25 for medium term load duration. Now this checkbox for trimmer joist or lintels is not usually very relevant because if we look here under the modification factors, we see that the load sharing factor for stud walls is always 1.1. So we can skip that box and go straight to the deflection limit. Maximum deflection is recommended to be set at 0 0.003 multiplied by the effective length, which is effectively the length of the rail of the stud wall or at a preset value such as 14 millimeters for dead and live loadings combined. The calculator uses the minimum of these two values. There is also an option for 0.002 multiplied by the effective length of the stud wall rail, and this is used when the timber rail is above a bristle element, such as a bi-folding door. Such a deflection limit will usually demand a deeper timber rail section than the 0.003 multiplied by the effective length deflection limit. For this example, we'll choose 0.003 multiplied by the effective length or 14 millimeters for dead and live. In the description, we can see that the critical rail is a rail of the opening. Next, we can close this window and take a look at the loading input to identify what is the timber stud wall going to support. In this example, we have a timber stud wall which supports a trimmer beam with a dead loading of 1 kN and a live loading of 1.2 kN. We also have timber floor joists from both sides supported off the timber stud wall. On one side, the timber floor joists span 2,000 mm, and on the other side, the timber floor joists span 2,000 mm. Hence, half of the loading on one side and half of the loading on the other side is supported off the timber stud wall. This is 2,000 mm divided by 2 on one side and 2,000 mm divided by 2 on the other side which gives us a width of loading perpendicular to stud wall of 2000 millimeters. So let's go back to our stud wall module and under loading, we can click the plus button to add a new load. And we'll call this one timber floor joists. And then select the load type. And in this case, this is a UDL for a uniform distributed load. Now to find the dead and live loadings, we'll click the pencil icon on the right hand side here to edit our selection. And under the timber floor joists drop down menu, we can select timber floor. And Pricerjob automatically provides us with the dead and live loading values. If you need to add any extra rows here, you can do so by clicking the plus add row. For example, we might add a row here for plywood with a dead load of 0.12 kN. Then we can use these grab handles on the left here to reorder the rows however we wish. Also, Pricerjob makes it even easier by allowing you to access a library of templates by clicking the template button. Then you can browse through the categories, including roof coverings, boarding, insulation, timber, finishes, masonry, concrete, and imposed live loads such as furniture or snow. So let's take a look at the boarding category and select the material. In this case, we'll choose 18 millimeter plywood and the load presets are automatically added for us. Now that we have a duplicate, if we wish to remove any of these rows, it's easy to do so by clicking the bin icon here on the right hand side. You can also change these values manually or change the template. But for this example, we'll leave the template as it is. Then under the width of load, we can input the width of the load perpendicular to the beam, which if we refer back to our diagram, we can see that we calculated to be 2000 millimeters. This is also called the influence width or the influence line of the element that we want to design. So here we'll input 2000 millimeters. And now we can close this window and input our wind load. And here we'll use a wind loading of 0.5 kilonewtons per square meter and a loading duration of short term 1.50. If you click here, you can show the load details in the report and this adds a descriptive table to the description. Or if you unclick this checkbox, then the loading details are not indicated in the report. Next, under section, 
The auto search feature will help us to optimize the timber stud quantity, width, and depth, and effectively the timber post width and depth of the timber stud based on the inputs of the previous sections. If we unclick auto search, then we can manually choose the quantity, width, and depth that we want. So we'll deselect auto search for now, and using the quantity selection, we can choose more than one timber post for the stud wall. However, for this example, we'll just use a single timber post. And then we can input the width of 50 millimeters by a depth of 150 millimeters. And here we enter the timber strength, or timber grade as we call it. Usually, we choose C16 or C24 for softwood. So for this example, we'll choose C24. If we select auto search for only the depth, then the calculator optimizes the depth for a given width based on the rest of the input of the previous sections. If we click auto search only for the width, then the calculator optimizes the width for a given depth based on the input of the previous sections. Or we can click auto search for both width and depth to optimize both of these values based on our previous inputs. And here at the top of our description pane, we see a summary of our results. Regarding the results summary, you can see that all checks have a status of pass, and we can also see their utilization factors. If we scroll down through the description, we can see that price job has provided the load details, and we can also show the load details in a table. Then we can scroll down further to see the stud details, the modification factors, the slenderness ratio, and the rest of the calculations in great detail. Now that this stud wall is done, if we have to do the same calculations for another stud wall, instead of starting all over again by creating a new module from scratch, we can save a lot of time by simply clicking the three dots next to this module here in the left-hand pane to open the module options menu, and then select duplicate module. This creates an exact copy of the module we just created, and we can click the three dots here to rename this module. So perhaps this would be ground floor stud wall number two, and save. And now we can just modify the values for the new stud wall. When you're ready, you can click on the Reports tab here in the left-hand pane, and here you'll see the Structural Calculations page. If you click Export as PDF, you'll see that your logo will automatically be shown at the top of the preview, and you can customize this as needed. At the bottom of the Structural Calculations, there's a section for additional notes, and you can either input these manually, or select the plus icon here to add professionally written notes from the Price a Job library. For example, we might select the category Structural Members, and then click this note to have it instantly added to our page. We can also add new notes to this template library by clicking plus add note. Or even add new categories for our notes by clicking the plus add category button. If we take a look at the category substructure, we can see another good example, and that lengthy notes like this are particularly handy for adding legal disclaimers. Once we've added a note from the templates, we can edit it normally here in the notes field. For example, we might modify this from steel beam to timber stud wall. Plus, you can also combine these structural calculations with a cover page and cover letter, both of which you can customize to show either detailed or simple information. And for your cover letter, you can type whatever you want here and then save it as a template by clicking the three dots here next to template. Here you can give your new template a name and save it for future reuse. And all of your templates will be stored here in this drop down menu. When you're done customizing, you can print the complete report or export it as a PDF or export it as a Word document or email it to your client directly from within Price a Job. And that's how to use the Timber Studwall Calculator to BS5268. Thank you for using Price a Job.